This is an open letter to Black America from Unity Ministers. We love you, and we embrace our responsibility to eradicate racism. It is our divine appointment to stand with you. To see you. To hear you. To listen. To be in conversation with you. To be with your anger without judgment. To know your sacred worth. To acknowledge my privilege. To take responsibility. To confront complacency. To back my words with action. Palabras con acción. To be accountable for effecting change in my community. To support Black-owned businesses. To be a bender of the arc of the moral universe that bends toward justice to demand the end of police brutality. To use my voice and my vote to end systemic racism. To hold you and our country in prayer. To be a call to action. To, to be, be a, a voice, voice for, for justice. justice. To be a voice for unity. In this constantly changing world, life and personal values can seem more than a little unstable. Just when you think you have it all figured out, then everything changes. Sometimes life can seem overwhelming. Well, the good news is, you can change your life. You have within you the power to learn how to flow with the changes and smooth out the bumps of life. You can experience the joy, peace, health, and abundance you deserve. You were created to be happy and productive. That urge to grow and express yourself was put there for a reason. Learn the spiritual principles that can help you not just to survive, but thrive in this changing world. At Unity, we'd like to help you do just that. Imagine a spiritual path that honors the universal truths in all religions, that sees we are all one. Imagine a movement that respects each person's right to choose their spiritual path. Imagine a spiritual movement that empowers and unites rather than divides. This is Unity. For more than a century, Unity has offered a positive, practical, and progressive approach to understanding and applying the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. Each and every person has inborn, God-given powers. We can change our lives by learning to use these powers consciously and intentionally. The way we use or misuse these powers shapes our reality. Connect with your higher self. Connect with the divine.
Welcome to Unity of Chicago South, Beyond Walls, Spiritual Community. I'm Reverend R. Ken Turner, and I say welcome to our celebration as we approach the halfway mark for 2022. We thank you for joining us no matter how you've done it, whether it was the actual uh, streaming on the Sunday that we were live, or if you're coming to us at another time, we thank you for being here. I want to remind each and every one of you that there's an infinite source available to everyone. It is there for each who seek it, no matter their race, gender, or religion. Believe what you may, but know that the source of the universe is also the source of each of us. Therefore, the principle supporting the stars is the principle supporting and available to each of us. Today's poem is entitled Prayer. One more morning after one more night. One more thanks for keeping things right. One prayer to bed, one as you rise. Good morning, God. Thanks for another sunrise. Prayer is the fuel that keeps us going. Through troubled times, pray for strength, keep rowing. And without fear, step out, face the unknowing, although all around negativity blowing. Every day, even one positive seed try sowing. Within my veins, God love is flowing. God is my friend, the devil not interested to know him. Here comes the garbage truck, over there, throw him. Don't just say you love God, pray, show him. Remember, prayer keeps us spiritually growing. A poem is brought to us by Richard Palmer from the website learnreligions.com. It says our unity practice sees Jesus as a master teacher, universal truth teller, and the way shower. We know that we teach the spirit of God lived in Jesus just as it lives in every person. Jesus expressed his divine potential and showed others how to express their divinity which we call the Christ. Scripture expresses it in this way. The kingdom of God is within you. In the revealing word, which is available from our website, Jesus' prayers were answered because he dwelled in the consciousness of perfect harmony with the Father. It is written that there were times that he went apart and renewed and revitalized that harmony. The same Christ within each of us is also seeking perfect expression to be experienced as a consciousness of divine harmony that can be reached through prayer and meditation. This is a spiritual work that raises the vibratory level of our thoughts and feelings, allowing us to become conscious conduits for the ongoing, ever-present, divine, universal vibrations to flow into our life experience. The harmony we seek comes through a conscious connection of our human vibrations with divine vibrations which is another way of saying a conscious recognition, a conscious realization of the existing gift of divine oneness. You see, we live and move and have our being in God's presence. Last week, Reverend Stephanie spoke about the power of prayer. If you missed that divine feminine celebration, you may want to go to our website and view it. Religious science founder Ernest Holmes provides a definition of prayer. He says uh, it this way, as uh, it is a silent contemplation of the divine presence ever stimulating the thought and the universal law of mind ever acting. 
Both Holmes and Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore agree that prayer is a unifying process and a synchronizing force, consciously unifying our awareness with the universal law and synchronizing our conscious actions with that same law. Now, when executed with understanding, the second part of the meditation prayer duet provides guidance, direction, and steps to move into the flow of a conscious divine life experience. As we accept the knowing that God is all there is and allowing this known truth to manifest itself in our life, in our affairs, in our world. It becomes our law, L-A-W, the law of our being. This acceptance of divine oneness begins the elevation of our thoughts and feelings. It can be challenging when we focus on what appears to be the lack of God presence in any given situation. But that is the very challenge. In fact, it can easily become the opening focus of any spiritual practice. As we say to ourselves, as we speak the words, Creator, grant me the vision to feel your presence in this very moment, regardless of appearance. The request is to feel God connection. It is a felt experience. The distinction here is that we see God effects of beauty that are found in nature unassisted by human hand. We see God effects in the smallest life form that preceded human presence on this family, on this planet. But neither is God itself. Neither the beauty or the presence of life is God itself. See, the, the present the presence of the Creator is what we are seeking to feel. A vision of God is not available. I'm going to say it again. A vision of God is not available. Now, artists do provide renditions of their vision of a God figure, but it is a mere, it's a mere impression, a concept created by the artist when there is no accurate representation available. But for many, herein lies the rub, you see. They say, I can't see this God idea which makes it difficult for me to accept presence. And that makes it hard for me to open to it for assistance in moving through the various challenges I encounter in life. Challenges like health challenges, relationship challenges, financial challenges, purpose challenges, career challenges, and so on and so on. The one called the teacher of teachers, Emma Curtis Hopkins, reaches through the ages and assists us make a breakthrough through this idea regarding God. She reminds that the real of what we seek from God is good in our life. And that good we seek is the ever-present God. She reminds that the real of what we seek from God is good in our life. And that good we seek is the ever-present God. The situation pr presented in our lives many times does not present itself as good. <laughs> Texas. Buffalo, but still God is every, ever, ever, ever present. That does not make it God's will to suffer, though. That does not make it God's will for pain for the sake of pain. We have pain sometimes because we're even unaware of an injury, a cut, or something that we have done to ourselves. And the pain makes us aware and says, oh, wow, we need a healing. But that's not pain for the sake of pain. See, what we're saying here is that it, it means in every human being, in 
the darkest of their actions, God is not absent. It is that presence of good that is available for the lifting from the darkness of so many of the darkest human moments and actions we, we encounter. <laughs> it is that presence that allows us to be lifted from the most darkest times. Please, please, please understand this. This God presence of good does not turn dark into light. This of good does not itself turn dark into light. This presence of good supports the required human effort to move from dark to light. Humanity is both perpetrator and rectifier. Humanity is both perpetrator of the darkness and rectifier of the darkness. We are the change agent for the manifesting of the good we desire. And Hopkins tells us that that good is God. She makes this bold statement that when we change our focus from a focus on a God that we cannot see to the good that God is, we begin our own movement from human darkness to spiritual light. God is all and that is all good. All good lies with God. God is our good. The health that we seek is our God. God is our good. The relationship resolution that we are seeking is God. God is our solution we seek is our God. God is our good. There are just a few examples there of adjusting from trying to visualize God, to see God, to working to activate and guide, activate and guide that feeling of the ever-present good that is God. Now one pathway to this conscious activation is proper prayer, which means we have to open ourselves to the divine good available that is available not just to us but to all humanity. Now there are various paths to proper understanding prayer. Today we're going to conclude with a variation, a combining of Charles Fillmore's pattern with Emma Hopkins' focus. There are seven steps outlined by Fillmore, and they can be found in the Unity Revealing Word text, which again is available for free download from our website 24-7. But let us begin with a paraphrased statement in its original form was made by Reverend Coleman, made famous by Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. She would say prosperity is my birthright. And we, we're saying that using Emma Curtis Hopkins and, and using <laughs> Charles Fillmore and meshing this together right now, it would read, paraphrased, God is my birthright. Good is my birthright. <laughs> and now, let's look at the steps to set the condition for proper understanding prayer. First step, God should be recognized as the father or the source for all that there is. Period. Point blank. Stop. Second step, oneness with this good, good, the good that we recognize as the source of all that we have, oneness with this good should be acknowledged. Good is the source of my supply. I am one with the good. You see, we've, you've heard this if you've been in New Thought. You may have heard it outside of New Thought. We live, move, and have our being in good. 
We are to, on the third step, we are to remember. We are to remember. Remember that this activity, this activity that we're doing, is an internal process. Even if the words are spoken out loud or in a group, the goal is to touch and adjust the prayer's consciousness. We are here to take the prayer and touch the prayer's consciousness. It's not about out here. It's not about what's going on out here. It's not about changing what's out here. It's about me as the prayer changing my consciousness and lifting into the good that already exists. The next step, the fourth step, the door must be closed to all thoughts and feelings about any appearing lack of limitation. La, 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 la. Let's just take a moment here. That is not saying that it doesn't exist out here. It doesn't, it's not saying that I haven't experienced it. It's saying that in this work, in this work of connecting with the good that is God, that I must close myself off from those appearances. I must not bring them into my spiritual work. So many times we bring the problem in to pray with the problem, expecting the problem to be resolved. And Fillmore tells us in this step, the fourth step, that we have to leave it out. Because what, what, what are we doing? We're taking it as the prayer and raising our own consciousness. The fifth step, the prayer must believe that the good that they seek is already present. You see, that's hard. I'm looking at my situation. It's difficult to believe that. It's just so difficult to believe it. But I say to you that if God is ever present and God is good, then that presence is there right now. You don't bring it from anywhere. It's already there. And it's up to us as the prayer Accept the fact that it is in existence right now, right where we are. The sixth. We are to know that the kingdom of good is the only thing we are to desire in our prayer work. Fillmore says it like this. The kingdom of good must be desired above all things. And it must be sought first in our spiritual work. That is what we're seeking, the good of God, <laughs> the good that is God, right? That awareness, that recognition, to activate it in our lives, that's our prayer. That's what we're praying for, this activation in our lives. Scripture says it like this, seek ye first the kingdom of God. But we say, seek ye first the kingdom of good. And that final seventh step, we're told that Every unforgiving thought must be released and released again and released again until it's gone. Let's understand, this is not a step of forgiveness. This is release. The letting go. The letting go. You say, well, isn't it the same? No, it's not. I just don't want that feeling anymore. I don't have to forgive anyone. I choose not to hold on to that feeling anymore. I release it in this work that I'm doing, in this, in this understanding prayer work that I'm doing. This lead into the meditation where I can hear God. I choose not to take anything there that would obstruct the good from expressing in me and through me. in this kingdom of good first seek ye the kingdom of good that's all we're seeking in this kingdom that we're seeking there is no unforgiveness we don't hope we release we let the process take care of itself
Now let's take that idea of understanding prayer into consciousness as we close today's celebration. Father, Mother, God, I am one with the process of God is good. Father, Mother, good. I am one with that process of understanding and realizing that the presence of good is here right now. That, that good is what I bring into my consciousness. That good is what I recognize and realize. That good is ever present because that good is God and God is that good. I am now working with the good and only the good. I bring nothing else into the good. I bring nothing else into the good. I only am working with the expression of the good, working to express it in my life and I anything that is outside of the good, but I only focus on the good. I seek the good before I seek anything else. It is my highest task to seek the good and to seek only the good. I let go of all thoughts that hold me away from the good that is present right now. I accept the fact that no matter what's going on in my life, the good is present right now. I embrace that thought. thought. I embrace that idea. I, I embrace the vibrations of the presence. Of the, I open to it and I raise my vibrations to meet the good so that it will express through me into my life experience. I thank you for such an opportunity to experience the good that he is. Thank you, Father, Mother. As you go forth this week, go forth with the joy of knowing that your good is already in place and your task is to connect with it. I'm Reverend R. Ken Turner. This is Unity of Chicago South, Beyond Walls Ministry. I say to you, blessings and bliss and namaste. Thank you so much for joining us on this time and day of celebration.